Hello all, Jamie Rogers here today for Creative Expressions and I've got a bit of a top tip for you on reverse stamping. Now we are going to be using this beautiful hummingbird stamp designed by Jane Gill and under our woodware brand at Creative Expressions. Now to do this what we're going to need is a blending mat. Now this again is one of our woodware products and I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to put it into my Vassen Creative Stamp Easy. I'm going to bring in that lovely hummingbird stamp and we are going to use some VersaFine Clair Black Ink and we're going to stamp this image down onto that blending mat. Now you could use a sheet of acetate if you don't have a blending mat but I will be honest I have found that the blending mats are a different material and do hold on to the ink slightly different to what the acetate does. It tends to pull a little bit more and move around on the acetate than it does the blending mat but if you've got it give it a try and see how you get on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of bright white card and place that on top of my stamped image. I'm going to also apply the rubber mat for my die cutting machine on top of it and I'm going to send it through the machine. Now I've used the same stack in which I would to emboss a um, stencil through my machine, just an ordinary mylar stencil and that's enough pressure to push down and transfer the ink off of that blending mat and onto my cardstock. Now you can use a brayer if you don't have a machine or a tan mat to hand and you can manually do it but I will be honest I found the machine applies a lot more pressure than I could with a brayer and you get a lot better finish. Now you can then bring in the same stamp and stamp it, in this case, looking towards each other because we've of course created the mirror image of the original image. So it's just a perfect way to give you that sort of double look style. This opens itself up to so many options. Now I will be honest with you, because of the first image was transferred off of the blending mat, it's not quite as intense as the one we just stamped because obviously that was direct ink onto the card where the first image went via the blending mat. So a good little tip here is, is if your images are slightly different tones, bring in some embossing powder if you have used an ink that will accept um, embossing powder and place that over the top and heat it. Once they've both been heat embossed they should match in a lot neater and nicer and you shouldn't have any problems. Now what I'm going to do is, I didn't even plan on doing this at the beginning when I was playing with this video, but I thought we'd have a little play. So I've brought in some airless misters and I'm going to use a lovely flirty pink and I'm also going to use lavender rain and then I'm going to go over the top with some pearl whisper. And I'm just going to mist these lightly over the top of them and then I'm going to bring in a piece of copy of paper, place that down, give it a good firm rub and pick up quite a bit of that ink. And that will leave me with a really soft but blended background with no drips or, or major areas where you may have created if you just left the ink to sit and dry on its own. The paper will really sort of smooth it out and give you a soft background. Now it's up to you here, you can leave that to dry so you're working on a dry surface or you can go straight in with more products. Now I've, I'll be honest, I went straight in with more products, I don't mind if the uh, pinks in the background sort of dilute or come to play along with the colours I'm now adding. So first of all I added some Ocean Sparkle Airless Mister and I just placed that onto my tile and painted in a few details. I've then brought in some of our Cosmic Shimmer watercolour inks and I've used Jade Sparkle. This is again a pearlescent one so it has that mica in it which is going to match in beautifully with the Pearl Whisper Airless Mister we used a little while ago. Now you don't want to watch me painting all of this and I'm not very good at painting so you're going to notice the video jumps along in quite a big jump here and there just so you don't have to watch me do all of these areas. I've also then going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in some lemon burst watercolour ink and I'm going to add in a couple of areas onto our hummingbirds with these colours as well. Now I'm not the best colourist I'm not going to lie to you and I don't even know if these are the right colours for a hummingbird thinking about it but I don't mind I'm just playing really. These are just the ones that I had on my desk that I thought I could play around with and show you a different way to colour your images and to sort of bring it all together. We're also going to be bringing in some raspberry jam from our watercolour inks too. Our watercolour inks are really good fun actually, if you've not come across these. Um, I know France, I read absolutely loves these, so of course does our lovely Jane Gill. They do an awful lot of techniques with these on their shows if you haven't seen them already. Um, so does Gwen actually, Gwen's very good with these too. They stay wet for a very long time, which gives you a lot longer to play around with them and paint in your designs with them. So if you've not played with these before, it might be something you want to have a little look at. Once I've done all of my blending and painting, because I'm not the best, I like to come in with a little something to judge it up and to sort of uniform the project together. So I've brought in another airless mister and I'm going to use silver moon dust, which again has mica in it. And I'm going to mist this all the way over the top. Now I've jumped ahead and heated my design so that it dries quickly and I can show you the finished result. 
Now, of course, this opens itself up to having a lot more done to this project, and it could be certainly finished off to be a home decor item, a card, or even a scrapbook album, maybe. The options are all completely up to you. All of the products I've shared with you today are, of course, available from all good creative expression stockists worldwide. I hope you enjoyed the top tip, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye for now.